So um, you were going to show something, I think, about uh, good versus better? Well, that's, you know, you s people think that the Macintosh interface and the other ones that are, that are like it, the various windowing interfaces, are good. But I think that they're not. They're actually quite terrible. The other day I hooked up, I um, networked my portable to, to another Mac that I have. Whenever you turn off the main Mac, the uh, dialog box appears on all the other machines on the network saying, it's gone off, it goes down. So the portable won't shut itself off, so it'll run down its batteries. You know, little things like, like, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's better than what came before, but it's not good. Can I show you an example of typical better good con con confusion? Sure, sure. Because uh, a lot of people get very con confused about this. OK, so what's okay, the Once example? upon a time, it's a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, as I tell my kids every night, there were these five and a quarter inch floppies. I think that a few K people still use them. And it's square. It can be inserted eight ways into a drive. One of those eight ways work. It's an awkward size, can be easily bent or damaged. And mm -hmm. if you're writing it with a ballpoint pen, you can, you can ruin it. You can touch it here to spoil the diskette. And to set the right protect notch requires that you put tape on it. Yeah. OK, now let's see what happened. I'm going to quote from a book, very excellent book that I recommend to everybody, The Psychology of Everyday Things by Professor Don Norman, a colleague of mine down at UCA uh, San Diego. Mm -hmm. And and now here is a man whose specialty is human interfaces, a yes. cognitive psychologist and one of the best I think there is. So I'm not attacking him when I quote from his book about the m more modern uh, three and a half inch floppy. He said, a simple example of good design is the three and a half inch magnetic for diskette for computers, a small circle of floppy magnetic material encased in a hard in hard plastic. A sliding metal cover protects the magnetic surface, mm -hmm. clearly an improvement over the old one, where yeah, you could just absolutely. touch it. Uh, and automatically opens when the diskette is inserted. The diskette has a square shape. There are apparently eight possible ways to insert it, only one of which is correct. What happens if I do it wrong? I try inserting the disk sideways. Ah, the designers thought of that. A little study shows that the case isn't really square. It's rectangular. If you put it in backwards, it doesn't work. And he ends up saying, an excellent design. Yes? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, dumb. It's nearly square, so it's not easy to tell. The difference is only 5%. The tiny corner cut, well, which way does it go? It can be inserted four ways, only one seat. But it looks like it can it be can inserted be, eight, can ways. Be eight ways. It, can, it looks like it can okay. be inserted eight ways. It mm -hmm. can only be inserted four. Um, the it depends on if you're Phil Rackety or not. He can actually <laughs> plug the wrong number of pins into a socket. Yeah, Phil, if you're strong, you can do anything. The sliding right protect tab is permanently attached, an improvement, but it's sometimes very hard to operate. I have a friend with very short fingernails. He, you can't. Um, does fit into a shirt pocket. Mm -hmm. But, okay. okay, so that is definitely better than went before. Right. But Dr. Norman felt it was really good. Well, when I showed him this, he said, oh, Raskin, you're, you're right. I fell into the better uh, good trap. Um, right. Here's how perhaps a disc, uh, floppy would be better designed. It's, it can be inserted uh, clearly. It's clear mm -hmm. which, which mm -hmm. way it, it goes in, nice and rounded, so it slips in very easily. Since these things are two-sided, it doesn't matter whether you put it in right side up or upside down. The computer could figure out which side is which. Who cares? Um, the, why isn't the right protect notch in the back of the diskette so you can change it after you put it into the machine? That's an interesting. People, people uh, always want to, to do that. You could even design the drive so you could look down and, and see the label. Um, this, I don't claim this is good. This is mm -hmm. much, much better. But what happens is that when people get too close to uh, the present day mm -hmm. interface, they they really hated what came before. They tried the Macintosh. It's considerably better, but it isn't good. In fact, it's absolutely dreadful. Right. Well, so now you um, actually went on to try and improve on the Macintosh, I guess. No, it just went in different direction. A different direction mm -hmm. with uh, with information appliance, right? Mm -hmm. Where I guess Dave Calkins and some some other, at least we worked with him at, at Packet Technologies, which mm -hmm. is where some of these mm -hmm. props came from. <laughs> Uh, um, you brought along a tape to roll in to demonstrate that to yeah. us. So this is this is going to show just one tiny little uh, Im improvement in cursor motion. Uh, I really hate using a mouse. It's sort of a hand-to-mouse existence. It's <laughs> tiresome. Uh, for working around text, mm -hmm. uh, take a look at this tape. Okay. So sure. this is uh, the Canon Cat, or the this is uh, an invention, patent invention called Leap, which was used by Canon on, on the Cat. It looks like maybe we have some technical difficulties with the tape. So, uh, it's probably coming in a satellite feed. Oh, here we go.
LEAP is an inexpensive technology that brings many benefits to its users. Most of the time spent at a computer or terminal is devoted to data entry and editing. Just as we've gone from cursor control keys to the mouse in the past few years, watch as we now move from the mouse to LEAP. That phrase should be enterprise computing. How will our typist correct it? The first step is to move the cursor to the error. Moving the cursor is one of the most frequent operations performed in using a computer. So any improvement here can significantly increase productivity. Cursor control keys, the most universally used method, typically repeat 10 times a second after a half second delay. It takes four and a half seconds just to get halfway across a standard 80 character line. Let's watch our typist move to the error using cursor control keys. User testing has shown that the average time to move the cursor between two randomly chosen locations on a standard display is about seven seconds. Users soon learn that they can speed the process with special commands for moving the cursor to ends of lines by typing words and other ways. But these added commands are hard to learn and increase the user's mental effort. Now, our typist will get to the error using the mouse. Oops. This took nearly three seconds. The mouse is not only faster, but the number of commands and techniques the user has to learn is smaller. Our typist will now find the error using leap. Oops. With leap, the average move takes about one and a half seconds. This move took less than one second. In many experiments, leap has been shown to be uniformly faster than any other cursor moving technique. So, well, that's, um, that's very interesting. It looks uh, like it's better to use. So why isn't it everywhere? Uh, that's a very good question. Why isn't it everywhere? Um, one thing I have found, which uh, may reflect on why the United States is doing so poorly competitively in many fields, is that the only companies that have seemed really interested in it, with only one recent uh, exception, have been com company, uh, country, uh, <laughs> countries, companies, with, right, okay. in uh, Japan and Germany. Right, okay. And uh, it's just that people, again, I think it's partly the good, better, everybody's into the mouse, the mouse is the trendy thing. Well, it's certainly a lot things. better than what came before in some ways. Of course, I had my arm in a sling last week, so it does have its, <laughs> its problems. But you, you still need a graphic input device for, for graphics. Yeah. So we're out of time. So um, thanks for watching High Tech Heroes. And uh, be sure to watch High Tech Heroes again next week when world famous graphics expert Bruce McDiffitt will be here from Industrial Light and Magic to relate his vision of the future. Au revoir. So again, gone in a flash. Thank you for joining us this week for High Tech Heroes. Be sure to watch High Tech Heroes again next week when we will bring you more entertaining information about the people and ideas behind the scenes in high tech industry. And now, this is your announcer, Margie Foote, wishing you the best of luck and a pleasant week. Au revoir. <laughs> This episode of High Tech Heroes has been made possible in part by grants from 
Linksys Incorporated of Lafayette, Indiana. Kinetic Microscience of San Jose, California. Behind the Scenes Software Incorporated of West Lafayette, Indiana. And Cybernetic Arts of Sunnyvale, California. <laughs>